Blessings, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel today. I am Dane, host of RMG. Hope you're doing well wherever you may find yourselves. And welcome, at long last, to my ranking of my top 25 favorite heavy metal bands or artists of all time. Before we dive into that, let me say that I won't be mentioning bands like Uriah Heep, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, Iron Butterfly, Steppenwolf, that kind of thing, Blue Cheer, because these are more, Vanilla Fudge, because these are more proto-metal bands or bands that have a say in the beginnings of the heavy metal movement. They are heavily influencing heavy metal that is to come. With one exception, um, one of the bands in this list is arguably a proto-heavy metal band, but they are also paradoxically or ironically, paradoxically, they are also, if you buy into um, critic Martin Popoff's theory, as I do, that this band, though a proto-metal album, their first album, they are the first band, or they are the band that invents heavy metal. Um, so let's get started. Coming in last at number 25, I don't have a prop for this band, uh, most of what I have from them is on MP3, in MP3 format, and that is Tigers of Pantang. I love their first four albums the most, and then I like their fifth and sixth album oh, to some degree, but the best part of the catalog is the opening four or five, maybe even six, as I said. But unfortunately, the best part of that run are the ones with John Sykes. Unfortunately, he doesn't stay in the band long enough, but beginning with Spellbound, which is my favorite album by them. Man, when I first heard that, I was like blown, again, in high school, blown away by that album. They, they do a song um, that, let's face it, uh, copies or plagiarizes Lou Reed's heroin, but hey, it's still cool and I'll, I like it. And great um, new wave of British heavy metal band. So again, 25, Tigers of Pantang. And also those first... Four or five album covers are pretty iconic, right? Wildcat, Spellbound, um, just great. There's the, the, I can't remember the one, uh, the third album, I believe, where the tiger on the cover is you know, like King Kong. He's on the top of a tower and he's swatting away planes, right? Really, and that's a, that's a fantastic album as well. So Tigers of Pantang coming in number 25. Number 24, unfortunately, this band only has three albums. You can't get their first EP anymore, which is called Volume 1. You can't get their first um, debut album, full full length album anymore, except on vinyl. You can't get it on CD, is what I mean. I'm talking about sleep. I remember when I worked in the music store at Musicland, and Sam Goody in the in the. Well, I had two tours of of that career job. Um, when I was working in the '90s, I remember seeing the original cover for this album, Dope Smoker, and it had. This um, Middle Eastern warrior on top of the Norse horse slept near, and I thought this looks kind of interesting. I wish I had had I known years later I was going to like this band and this style of music. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and all that. Had I known, I would have loved. I would have bought it back then because that album cover you can't, that CD cover you can't find anymore. Um, and if you do, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. So I wish I had grabbed it back then. Uh, this is the revisioned cover with the dune-like caravan cover. You have the ship on the back. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's just one song. They reissued this as um, Jerusalem with the, the song because it's so long. It's over an hour sec put into sections. Um, I like it better this way. And this has a um, bonus track of Holy Mountain that's 11 minutes and change. So, again... So only three albums. This and Sciences are great. I, I, I do like the debut. It, it's it's very raw and unpolished and still the band finding their sound, but I do like it. But this is this and um I'm sorry, this Holy Mountain and the Sciences. They have three they have four albums. So they're four albums. You can't get the debut anymore except on vinyl. And so again, this Holy Mountain and the sciences, those three are great. So they have really four albums, as I said, but I have to include them here because, to quote a, a good friend of mine who's one of his favorite bands is the Stooges, they only have three albums, really two, because the third album is really a Nicky Pop 
kind of thing. So, hey, it's what you like that matters. Uh, if they have one album, you want to put them in your list, knock, knock yourself out. I, I don't have a problem with that. So, again, Sleep coming in at number 24. Now, this next artist, I don't like everything in his catalog, is in his discography. The best part of said discography is first two studio albums and a live album. You know where I'm going with this. I'm talking about Ozzy. I like some of the third uh, studio album, Bark of the Moon, but when I remember seeing the video for So Tired, I was like, wow, third, three, three albums in and he's already gone commercial. Um, I like Jakey e. Lee, doesn't compare it in my personal opinion to the great Randy Rhodes, and once you get to Osmosis, at least for me, I'm pretty much out. There's a few songs I like on the last two, um, Patient Number Nine and the, and the and whatever the one before that, where he's wearing the bowler hat, right? Um, but this is him in his glory days and his youth, right? So I got to include Ozzy because of the this live album, and even though it's Black Sabbath, um, and those wonderful Randy Rhodes first two albums. And and this is while well, this is a Black Sabbath album, it's it's Ozzy spin on it, right? He's got Brad Gillis on guitar and Rudy Sarzer on bass and the, the wonderful Tommy Aldridge on drums. Um, this is fabulous, despite the fact that Ozzy's pretty much disowned this. All right. <clears throat> Number twenty two is Monolord. This may not be a band you're familiar with. They are a doom metal band. They're they have six or seven albums. Their their most recent um, outing is an EP, and I heard it. I, I didn't like it because they went down the melodic route um, six or seven albums in, and his the lead singer's voice is meant for doom metal. It doesn't go with the more melodic style, in my humble opinion. So um, I wanted to like it. I, ju- I just don't, so I have to be honest with myself there. So Monolord comes in at number 22. Their first two albums are their best, although I do like the stuff that follows, not counting the, the new EP, the first the first album is called Empress Rising. You should check it out if you're not familiar with the, the title track on that is phenomenal. It's kind of an epic track. I want to say it's like 10, 11 minutes long. And then the second album, Veneer, named after the um, the Norse gods that are rival to the Aesir, the Asgardians. Um, wow. I I think that's my favorite in the discography, the second album, Veneer. It's got this um, woman in a white raincoat in the rain falling. It's it's kind of a captivating photo you can't see her face because she's got her back turned to you but it's it's it you it's one of those album covers you want to look at and go what does this mean kind of thing so anyway modern lord coming in at number 22 great doom metal band if you ask me uh coming in at number 21 is anthrax this is a great comeback perhaps one of the greatest comeback albums of all time from start to finish it's great you have worship Earth on Hell, The Devil You Know. That's a cliched title, but it's heavy metal, right? Um, Fight Him Till You Can't, I'm Alive, In the End, The Giant. Then they have a song called Judas Priest. You want to check that out, full of allusions to the band and their songs and their song lyrics and that sort of thing. Then you have Crawl, which is wonderful, um, The Constant, and then Revolution Screams, a great way uh, to end the album. Revolution Screams has, um, it's one of those songs where you think the song ends, but you got to keep listening because there's a long pause and then it comes back for another minute or two at the end to, to finish the song. This is great. Again, one of the, if I had to guess, I would say off the top of my head, one of the top five, top ten comeback albums of all time. I love their second album. This, that album and this are my two favorite. I, I like the debut. I, I don't want to say I love it, but I like it a lot. It's, it's, very, it's a very good album. I, I do like Neil Turpin's voice. Um... I like some of the third album, although most of the time uh, I'm just not in the mood. There's a couple songs. This is where they get silly with the the song titles backwards. And um, anyway, so an album I used to like. I like Persistence of Persistence of Time. I like the last Bush John Bush album, although it sounds like Pantera. I guess that's what they were going for. Um, even though I only like four, five, or six, five or six albums, maybe seven, by Anthrax, I gotta include them in there, in this list, because, um, such a part of who I am as a, a music fan, so Anthrax coming in at number 21, number 20, Saxon, this is the 
40th anniversary of the Eagle has landed the three disc set. It covers a lot of a lot of live material, as you would guess, um, from the beginning of their career pretty much to um, everything I would say up to including not the last two albums, um, give or take. You have stuff like Denim and Leather, Power and the Glory on here, The Eagle Has Landed, Stand Up and Fight, Night of the Wolf. Then you have later stuff like Thunderbolt, The Secret of Flight, Battering Ram, um, Red Star Falling, State of Grace. So if you don't have this, check this out. And I also have um, the original, not really original, original in the sense that it's the, the, fir it, the first disc is the original 10 songs for Eagle Has Landed and then... Um, Bonus tracks live at Hammersmith, uh, tracks 11 through 16. Um, I think it's just one disc after all, but it, it divides it on the back to show you that you have the original songs from the original vinyl pressing when it came out originally, and then the bonus tracks here. So, Saxon, worth checking out if you don't have either of these. You, you need to get both of these for the full experience um, because some of the songs in the original are not on here. So that's why I got both of them. Uh, so Saxon number 20 coming in at 19 no and 18 there are no props here uh, Merciful Fate is number 19 I love Melissa I love Don't Break the Oath um, then there's that compilation of um, outtakes or bonus material that they made into one album called Night of the Vampire which is fabulous um, then there's things like the uh, the comeback album which eludes me um, you know they went. They you know because of King Diamond, yeah, King Diamond's involved in his solo career, and Merciful Fate breaks up or on hiatus, and then there's that long dry spell, and then they come back. I can't remember the name of that album. It's very dark and creepy, and and like a horror movie. I can't remember the name of it. It's it's, it's you have to be in the right mood to listen to it. Um, so I have to include Merciful Fate. There's the um, oh God, this is, a, is the album called Time. Um, it's like an alternate version of Satan's Fall on. Just some wonderful stuff. Some of the later stuff um, is okay, but that early period is in that comeback album, as I mentioned, is really good. So speaking of King Diamond, so 19 Merciful Fate, King Diamond is number 18, and that's because, largely in part, because of Abigail and them. That heavy metal twin guitar sound, the tone of those guitars, the whole, and the whole band is on fire on these, and the story is great and all that, the concept albums, but... There's something wonderful and magical and superb about the two twin guitars in these albums. Just fantastic. And then I like other things like The Eye and Conspiracy and, you know, various EPs and that sort of thing. And some of the later stuff is good, especially some of the live material. So I have to include King Diamond in number 18. Just twin guitar goodness, right? Coming in at number 17 now is a band I've fallen in love with in the last two years or so, and this is Uncle Acid and, and the, um, oh God, the Deadbeats, now just called Uncle Acid. This is their their most recent studio album, although their most recent album is this live album, Slaughter on First Avenue. This is fantastic double CD um, treat. If you're not familiar with them, I would describe them as donor, stoom, psychedelic metal. Um, worth checking out. And their lead singer sounds like a creepy version of John Lennon, like a mischievous, demo slightly demonic sounding John Lennon. Um, it's wonderful. Got to check them out. So that was 17. Coming in at number 16 is New Orleans' own Down. I love this first album. Second album's okay. It's very uneven, but in a bad way. Third album's okay. The live stuff is good. And then those two purple EPs are fantastic. So I have to include Down here. Um, number 16. Number 15 is a tie. You'll see why. Talking about Celtic Frost. And then Triptychon, which is Thomas Gabriel Warrior's project after Celtic Frost breaks up a second time after their comeback album, Monotheist, which is fabulous. But this pretty much picks up where Celtic Frost le leaves off, although I would say this is a, a tad bit heavier in a good way. Um, it's too bad that their career, this, they haven't done anything in a while, Triptychon. And although, well, last year Triptychon played at Hellfest, I believe, and they played Morbid Tales and Tomegatherion back-to-back. -back. I wish I would have gone if 
I had, had I known, but I, I learned after the fact. Um, so yeah, not enough, not a huge discography for either of these, but like I said, I have to include them. All right. So number 14 is Queen Drake. Got the EP. You have Warning. Love the Warning. I think it's underrated. You have Rage for Order, which is phenomenal. And then if you think Rage for Order is phenomenal, this is phenomenal times 10. Unfortunately, you get into Empire and Promised Land, which are just very good. Okay, very good. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board for very good. But unfortunately, this is where they peak. Um, so you have the EP. Then the EP is reissued with a bonus track, which is great. You have Warning, so that's two. You have Rage for Order, three. This is four if you count the EP, then Promised Land and Empire. So five, six, seven, really great albums or very good. And there's some good songs afterwards, but pretty much after, once you get to Tribe, it's pretty much done uh, for me anyway. I don't want to speak for others, for, so for me. So, but I have to include Queen's Right, part of my DNA, teenage years, just I love them that period. All right, so number 13 is Dio. Talk about peak too early, right? Uh, I like Last in Line. You get into, <coughs> excuse me, you get into the third album, Sacred Heart. It's more pop, introducing keyboards. There's the fighting with Vivian. May explain, you know, everything's half-baked perhaps. Then you get into Dream Evil, even more keyboards. Dio at one point said, no keyboards. He's got keyboards going down the 80s route. I guess Dream Evil is to Dio what Turbo is to Judas Priest. More on that later. But Dio has a comeback sort of with Lock of the Wolves. Lock Up the Wolves, which I quite, I'm quite fond of. I think it's an underrated album. And then he's really back with Lightning and Thunder with um, Strange Highways, which has one or two songs which he stole off the cutting room floor from the Dehumanizer period. Iomi didn't want them on the record, and Dio takes them, and then Iomi's angry at Dio. Well, if you listen to Strange Highways, it sounds like a Sabbath record a la Dehumanizer. Go figure. So, have to include D Dio. You have to, right? That voice, that majesty, that power, the songwriting, the fantasy, right? Great. Dio's great. Number 13. Number 12 was Pantera. I don't think you can get this live album anymore. 101 Proof. New Level Walk, Becoming, Five Minutes Alone, Sandblast to Skin. So great. Suicide Note Part 2, War Nerve, Strength Beyond Strength, Don't Sorry, Dom Hollow, This Love, I'm Broken, is Fabulous, Cowboys from Hell, Cemetery Gates, Hostel, Where You Come From, and I Can't Hide. 16 amazing tracks. What a great band. Um, Martin Popoff describes Pantera as Metallica on steroids, and I would partially agree. Got to include Pantera in this list. All right. Next, although more hair met, the mo probably the most hair metally band on this list, including. You know, Ozzy, once we get into Bark in the Moon in more commercial waters, have to include the Scorpions. And then, of course, discography-wise, they're all over the place. You have a first album, which has been described as Kraut Rock, maybe Proto-Stoner Rock, Psychedelic Stoner. It's it's great. I like it. It's Heavy Metal Stoner, Heavy Metal Psychedelic, actually better term to describe it. Then you get into Flies of the Rainbow, a little bit more of the same, but now you're getting into more... Uh, a little bit more commercially, although those commercial songs are long, like the title track and, and the one that's kind of piggybacking on the title track. can't remember the song off the top of my head. But Fly to the Rainbow is is them beginning but not fully finding their, their sound. And then you get into Entrance, where now we're, now we're getting into their, the hard rock period. Not heavy metal, but I'm including them because of Blackout and because of parts of Animal Magnetism, parts of... Um, Taken by force, so there's there's that there's enough to, and and then after, uh, love at first bite, love at first sting, they get way too commercial, and they're you you can't call them heavy metal at all. Um, so this is kind of cheating because they're more commercial, commercial metal or hair metal, at least in this love drive. The love drive have to include love drive. You have you know they're getting very ballady and stuff. They're losing some of that hard rock edge. Although 
despite the fact that they lose their hard rock edge, they're not sounding like the Uli John Roth era, you do get some heavy stuff like Blackout and the, the guitar solo on No One Like You, um, Arizona, China White is heavy, right? So the ballad of When the Smoke is Going Down. So this, this, it, it, there's a little bit of metal going on when it comes to Scorpion. So I, yeah, you would put the Morning League of Dawkins and, and Rat and, you know, I guess Poison and Cinderella, but in, at least in this period for them. Uh, but I, I'm I'm including them. I have to because of that twin guitar. They're they're in in the same way. They're in the same league with Judas Priest and the Iron Maiden from that standpoint. At least for me, because when I was in high school, um, after I long discovered Zeppelin and Kiss and Rush, I I got into this twin guitar stuff the heavy stuff, so to speak. It's heavy back then for us, right? Scorpions, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, the big three for twin guitar metal, so I'm counting Scorpions. Um, and, and no one like used my favorite song by them. That guitar solo is just fabulous. Um, but there's a lot to like in that discography from Lonesome Crow through and including Love at First Thing, which is the only period I like. Okay, so <coughs> Scorpions at number 11. Number 10 is Slayer. Live and Dead. Great albums. You got the Haunting the Chapel EP, you have this, you have Show No Mercy, you have Hello Waits, of course, you have the wonderful Rain and Blood, that the type, sort of tiny title track, you have South of Heaven, where they slow things down, but it's so great, and then you get um, Seasons in the Abyss, that's their best period, right, and there's a couple things after that, uh, World Painted Blood is is decent, right, um, Slayer's phenomenal, oh, the live album, the Decades of Aggression, what's well, a fabulous live album. Uh, this is too short, but it's worth having. So that's why I'm presenting that to you. So Slayer, I have to include um, Slayer at number 10. Number 9 is one of those bands, if only they kept going with their metal music instead of going commercial, talking about Metallica. We're st- a lot of us are still, what could have been with this band, right? Cliff Burton or no Cliff Burton? What happened? Once you, so you think about Metallica for a minute. You go from what I consider their best album in Kill 'Em All. It's raw. It's heavy. It's how it's supposed to sound. You want to headbang from start to finish for the most part. Maybe slow down with anesthesia pulling teeth. And then they change their style somewhat because you get Ride the Lightning. And now it's polished because they're on electric records now. And you have an instrumental that's even more polished than Anesthesia. And it's it's fantastic, Call of Cthulhu. But you got a couple commercial, sort of quasi-commercial with Trapped Under Ice. And Escape is the commercial song, really. Um, and you still have some really cool thrash. or so, It's not as thrashy as the first one, but you have some thrash with MI, I'm sorry, with... Um, Creeping Death, and you have the Creeping Death EP comes out that has Blitzkrieg and Am I Evil on it. Um, I had that on vinyl. So much in the same waters, but still transitioning to a more polished sound. And then from that, they go on to Master of Puppets, which still has that thrashy element with battery. But it's different because it has an acoustic intro, so you have the light and shade. You have the wonderful Master of Puppets title track. Then things slow down with the thing that should not be. That's not thrash at all. You have Welcome Home Sanitarium, in parentheses, where James is singing in a more um, um, aesthetically pleasing sound instead of the heavy, you know, thrash metal voice that he's kind of disowned. Disposable Heroes, heavy back to that thrashy sound, right? Then you get Leper Messiah, things kind of sl- not as heavy, right? Orion's a wonderful, wonderful instrumental, one of my favorite of all time. And then you get Damage Incorporated, which is to this album, like Whiplash perhaps is to um, the first album. And then you get the prog metal masterpiece and Justice for All, where they change again. And then after that, they change and get way too commercial with the Black Album. So if only... Um, the closest thing I could think to stuff in front that that look that kind of sounds like the first four albums is maybe parts of Death Magnetic and maybe in a Morata on the new album, and that's it. Um, guitar solos aside, so Metallica only four albums I really really like. The Black Album I do like half of it. 
Um, there's some good stuff on that, but not great. But I have to include Metallica here, DNA and all that. So Metallica coming in at number nine. Slayer was 10. Number eight is Megadeth. Boom, 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 right? So this is the double CD version. It has live at the Fantasy Theater Cleveland 1987. It's quite good. Um, not really a thrash album if you think about it because you have... Uh, Wake Up Dead, The Conjury. It's more heavy metal. We'll put it in the thrash category, of, of course. There's some thrashy elements here, but overall, um, still a heavy metal band, still a heavy metal album. I love this album, although Rust in Peace is my favorite. And like Metallica, their first four is the best. But unlike Metallica, they have some really good stuff in their discography after their first four masterpieces, masterpieces. Um, I don't consider Megadeth's debut a masterpiece, but I'm quite fond of it. Um, still in their best four. You have things like Endgame. You have things like um, Euthanasia, which I'm quite fond of. Countdown to Extinction. Um, cryptic Writings. Th those in the first four are their best, if you ask me. So Megadeth coming in <coughs> number eight. Number seven, Electric Wizard. Megadeth used to be higher, but Electric Wizard and Banjo C, some of these have taken over the reins. Um, this is their magnum opus. I love every album by Electric Wizard. My brother-in-law turned me into the, turned me onto them um, years and years ago. Too bad they broke up. Their last album, Wizard Bloody Wizard, I was quite fond of. A little different, very short, or sort of short, but I do like it. Um, some great stuff here. Um, so, Doom, one of Doom Metal's finest bands. One of their finest albums. All right. So, number seven, Electric Wizard. Number six is Motorhead. This used to be higher up in the list, but things happen. Here's the No, no Remorse compilation. A couple uh, extra new tracks when it first came out, right? Like, um, <coughs> Killed by Death. A lot of people don't like Motorhead because of they don't they can't get past Lemmy vo Lemmy's voice. I've never had a problem. Their, their masterpiece, Magnum Opus, is Ace of Spades, and o Overkill would be second. Um, but this is the classic, iconic um, picture uh, drawing of their mascot, and uh, same album cover as their debut. Anyway, lots to like here, even after... Um, it's still hard to believe that Lemmy's, moved, uh, that Lemmy's passed... And so have Phil and um, Fast Daddy. It's, it's, it's still shocking. Anyway, but despite the fact that um, Lemmy kept going without Fast Daddy leaving to, jo to start Fast Way and Filthy coming in and out and then eventually leaving for good, brings in Mickey D and, and they, the, the Orgasmatron, I, I thought was fat. still think today is fabulous. And while Bastards and March or Die with Mickey D still not there yet. They get there with albums after they have that, that second coming sort of thing with um, or, or uh, a revival or um, return to form, even though you have new members in the band. So I have to include Motor, Motorhead. I listen to Motorhead all the time. As far as their discography goes, I only I have everything by them except Bastards, March or Die, um, uh, and a couple others. I have almost everything by them. So there's a few I don't like. So anyway, so <coughs> that was number six. Let's see. Yes, number five is Iron Maiden. Used to be higher in my list, used to be third, but some bands have taken over that. This is their magnum opus. It's alive. This is to Iron Maiden what Kiss Alive is to Kiss. Um, Iron Maiden, what can you say? I love... The Paul Diano years, short-lived as they are. I love Bruce Dickinson's voice. My favorite era for Iron Maiden is the debut through and including um, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Um, I'm not a big fan of Fear of the Dark. And um, there's the one where Eddie comes out the coffin and grabs the victim. I can't remember the name of that album. I don't care for that much either. Um, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Give me a break, right? A Sorry, I don't, I don't like that. I don't, it's cheesy, right? Um, I like the song "Fear of the Dark." Now, their 
return to form with Brave New World. You're bringing Adrian Smith back. You still have Yannick, right? But I like that album quite a bit. And then everything after that, I, I really can do without, unfortunately. But they're still, they still make this list, and they're at... There's deservedly so, such an influence on me and so many people. Number five, Iron Maiden. All right. This is blasphemous for many of you that I'm putting the next two bands above Iron Maiden, but number four for me, this is personal, of course. This is an opinion. Sirith on goal. Got into them in high school, junior, senior year, and that's all she wrote. Once I heard Frost on Fire, that's all it took, and I've gotten everything from them. Uh when I could. Um, this is the two-disc version, the 40th anniversary remix, and the 2021 remaster. I like to remaster better than the remix. Although the remix is kind of neat. Um, so, what a band. Uh, it, voice is not for everybody. Tim Baker's voice, I think, is, is, is unique in a way. Um, I, I, like I said, I like it. So, there's some great stuff here. This is this is American heavy metal, but I give them honorary status for new wave of British heavy metal because this is coming out while the new wave of British heavy metal is going on. Um, they're not from England, they're not from Britain, but um, there's something about them that makes me think of the new wave of British heavy metal. I hope that's not blasphemy. I hope I'm not offended anybody. Um, I, I, again, they're not part of that movement, but I or or genre era really but i consider them honorary members of them of because there's something about them that gives that new wave of british heavy metal vibe in in a, in a slight way not totally but there you go sirathon goal coming in at number four <coughs> now number three used to be further down the list talking about high on fire emmy award winning album here this came out in wow 2018, Prince really small, but I think that's what it says. And right a year before the pandemic, or a year and a half, or two years, and that, that's their last studio album until this came out yesterday, or a couple of days before I got it yesterday. I've not finished listening to it. I did a, a can't wait video, I think, uh, and there are 11 songs. I've heard the first four now. I'm loving this. This, If things continue to go in the, in the direction, I hope, and I finish listening to this tonight, I'm going to do a review on this hopefully by the end of the week or sooner. If things go the way I think they will, this may be in my top five or top three of my favorite High on Fire albums of all time because um, that's how much I'm liking it. And they have a pretty big discography uh, compared to Sleep. So, boy... Get your hands on this if you can. Tell me what you think. I'm not finished, as I said, but High on Fire is number three, and that's partly because, mostly actually, because of Matt Pike. His guitar, his riffage is just wow over the top. It's, you know, they're influenced by by Motorhead and, and so many other pioneers. Um, who knows who they'll, go, who they'll go on to influence. They have a new drummer, but... Matt Pike, um, he's moving up that list of my favorite guitar players. I have to revisit that and maybe do another video. But I saw him, like I said, with, um, oh, I didn't say that. I, I may have said this in another video. I saw Matt Pike with Sleep Live in 2018 in Knoxville um, before the pandemic. And wow, his guitar skills are just amazing. Um, so I have to put them in the third spot. Uh, number three. High and Fire, check this out if you can. You don't have this, Electric Messiah, quite good. All right, number two, Judas Priest. Talking high school. First album I heard, Screaming for Vengeance. This is the second album. A friend of mine said, you got to listen to this. It doesn't sound anything like Screaming for Vengeance, not really, except for Halford's high register at times, but it's raw. It's not as polished as Screaming, but man, is this good. So... Part of me as a young man carried on to adulthood. This is just, again, part of who I am as a person. Now, on some days, this will be number one, and my number one will be number two, but on most days, Judas Priest is number two. For the most part, an amazing discography. You take out the Tim Ripper Owen stuff, um, 
which is okay. They're still at the bottom of the discography ranking. You can check that video out. Shameless plug. Um, <coughs> but with the exception of Turbo, most of side two of Point of Entry and forgetting I don't like most of Firepower. What a discography, right? Pioneers, perhaps inventors of power metal. Judas Priest, number two. And finally, number one, Black Sabbath. I'm presenting this album because this is where, and I'm not the first person to say this. I won't be the last. I did not coin this idea, but this is where doom metal begins with songs like Lord of this World, Solitude, and especially Into the Void and to some degree, Children of the Grave. But those last three songs are really where you get that doom metal vibe going, although we didn't call it that back then. So, Master of Reality, fabulous album. Some days it's my favorite Sabbath. More more not than all. Sorry, most of the time it's not, but sometimes it is. And why the hell not? This is great from start to finish. And because it's the pioneer beginning of the doom metal movement era sort of um doom metal really doesn't get going to later but this influences the doom metal um genre subgenre much later um what can you say about the dynamic of ozzy you know he has that charisma despite the fact that um many people criticize his voice i like his voice very much i love his voice in fact geezer is such an amazing bass player and songwriter from a heavy metal standpoint He's not Bob Dylan, but you don't expect him to be. Um, what can you say about the drummer in Bill Ward? You have a an, an apathy that comes later, but but Bill Ward is you have a jazz drummer in a heavy metal band, right? And then finally, uh, t- Tony Iommi, the riff master himself. Um, so their first album, Black Sabbath, p- proto metal, but also the beginnings or the inventors of heavy metal so i'm including them here because they 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 started it all let's face it and they inspired judas priest you could argue right so there you have it these are my top 25 favorite heavy metal bands or artists of all time mostly bands of course have a blessed day if you want to post in the comments um your disagreements your agreements your own list i would love to hear what you have to say thanks for watching take care now bye bye